three zero and a reflection across the x-axis. So what you wanted to see is how this is going to move. What is the three zero going to do to all of your points? What's it going to do to the actual point itself? Move it three. And what's it going to do to your coordinates? How do you calculate your new coordinates with that movement right there? Take your x's and do what to them? Yeah, you're going to take your x's and you're going to add three to all of them. The zero doesn't affect your y at all, right? Y plus zero is just y. What about reflecting across the x-axis? What does that change? What does it change when you reflect across the x-axis? It negates your y. So this is what your new values should have looked like when you did that movement, both of those movements together. You, so when it asks for a new rule, it says um, state a mapping rule. This is what it's talking about right here. This is the mapping rule. It wants you to write what happens to all of your points. And so you would have taken every one of these points and you would have added three to your x's. And then you would have taken ever, every one of these y's and negated them. And so if you add three to all of them, your new d after you have moved it would have been zero, negative two. Your new e when you moved it would be zero, positive one. Your new g when you move that would be two, negative three, and your new F when you moved that would be five, positive one. And then you would have mapped it and you would have seen your quadrilaterals at the beginning and at the end, all right? And for these, you can actually do them individually. I will let you move it and then reflect it, or you can calculate your new rule and just go straight to your new. So either way, I will let you do those. Hopefully we're all familiar with the term symmetric. If something is symmetrical, hopefully you've used that term before. And if something is symmetrical, then you should be able to see some type of similarity on one side or the other. There's actually multiple types of symmetry. The one that you're most familiar with is the first one we're gonna talk about, which is line symmetry. Line symmetry. The actual definition here, so like on a test, if I were to question the definition here, Line symmetry is meaning that the isometry is a reflection. Line symmetry means you have a line of reflection somewhere in the figure that you could reflect across itself, pretty much. They've given us this example of a seashell. If you've ever been to the beach and you have found them still attached to each other, you have seen line symmetry, right? Because if you were to close the shell, you would see it was really the same on both sides. And if you were to open it and draw a line in between it like they have here, you would see the same figure on the left and on the right. That is line symmetry. You could take one of the figures and you could reflect it over that line and you would have the other figure. That's line symmetry, all right? Line symmetry. Um, figures can have more than one line of symmetry. Your seashells only have one here. Because if I were to do it any other way, you could see that reflecting across would not give me the same. So this only has one line of symmetry. But other figures can have multiple lines of symmetry. If we look at the examples they give us here, um, how many lines of symmetry do these have? Um, you actually are going to have a line of symmetry at every vertex, for starters. So if I were to draw a line from vertex to vertex, oh, if I were to do it neatly, that would be better. From vertex to vertex, something like that. You can see I have a line of symmetry, and I can actually do that across every single one of my vertices. Right across here, right across here. I just got three of them right there. But I actually have other ones as well. I can do a line of symmetry from the midpoint here and down, and from the midpoint and down, right? So for this particular one, I have six lines of symmetry. How many vertices do I have? Yeah, six, right? Which is what you'll find on a regular polygon. You will find that the lines of symmetry follow the uh, vertices. They follow the number of vertices that you have. All right? Um, and I don't know that your book talks about it, but this is actually also called point symmetry. Point symmetry. 
You'll notice that all of your lines of symmetry uh, crossed at one point, and that point is equidistant from the side or vertex that it went through and the other side or vertex. Um, when you have that, you have something called point symmetry as well, point symmetry. When all of your lines of symmetry intersect and they are equidistant from every single point that you got from. So that's point symmetry. All right, let's look at the cross section of the apple. The apple's kind of laying on top of it, but you'll see in the center that you have a floral looking thing where your seeds are. How many pieces of that floral looking thing do you have in there? Five. So how many lines of symmetry do you think I'm going to have here? Okay. All right, so let's look at this. If I do my lines of symmetry here, I have to go directly through. It's not going to be pretty. There we go. I have to go directly through that little point and cross through the guys below it, right? And I can do that with every single one of them. Um, but I'm actually going to only end up with five of them because I had five to begin with. So this guy's going to have five points of symmetry as well. So your design can also make a difference, whereas that was not a regular polygon, it had to design it. And so you'll see certain designs that come up, you come across that are not necessarily uh, polygons like this one over here, but they are some type of design in nature. And they can also have line, line symmetry, all right? And they will follow the pattern. So if you have a pattern that's following, remember we did tessellations and they actually hit tessellations again at the end of this chapter. But remember we did the tessellations where you created it and you drew it and you patterned it around, all right? And so you'll see tessellations that happen where you see this loop that pictures around what those seed pods are. You'll have line symmetry to follow those tessellations as well, all right? That's line symmetry. The next thing that we see is rotational symmetry, rotational symmetry. God created objects with another type of symmetry. And actually, you'll see line, linear and rotational symmetry in creation. Um, but very often, you'll see the florals here. So this is, like a tess this is like a tessellation. Whereas if I were to draw a line across it, so I were to take this flower and draw a line across it, I have a problem. This does not have linear symmetry. We don't have line symmetry here. The reason I don't is if I were to reflect this little piece of this flower across, you can see it's not the same on the other side. For line symmetry, it must truly be a mirror image across, okay? But what is different here is I can do what's called a rotational symmetry. And so if I take this flower and not, not draw a line, but if I were to rotate it and just twirl it, you can see that this little leaf here would land on top of this one. And it would look exactly the same if I were to just rotate it. That is rotational symmetry, rotational symmetry. They give you this example right here. Um, this actually has line symmetry too, right? This actually has both. So if I were to take this guy, I can draw line symmetry. That actually is perfectly symmetrical with that line. Everybody see that? Line symmetry. So I have line symmetry for this one. I have how many lines of symmetry do you think I have for this guy? How many lines of symmetry? Yeah, I have three, three lines of symmetry. But this one also has rotational symmetry. If I were to take this and I were to rotate it around, rotate it around, it would land on top of itself. How many times could I rotate it before I went back to where I started from? So I could rotate from here to there, that's one. From here to here, that's two. And then from here to here, that's Three. You could probably tell that right away. What picture there do you see right away? We have three little pieces, right, that are identical. So how many degrees then would I move to rotate it on top of itself once? What do you think I'm going to do? What's an entire rotation? How many degrees is that? 360. How many did we say I could possibly rotate it? Three times. So how many degrees have I moved for one of those? 120. This is called the magnitude, by the way. You're going to need to know that word. And I, how many degrees it takes to actually rotate once and get it to where it needs to be? All right, magnitude. So the 120 represents the magnitude of this first one. You do need to know that term.
You do need to know that term. There will be terms on this particular test. So you do need to know that term. All right. N is the order of symmetry. Order means how many times I can rotate it before I'm back on top of itself. All right. So this order for this guy is three, which means the magnitude is 360 divided by three. Now this next guy is a little bit different. He has line symmetry. How many lines, how many lines can I draw through this and it be symmetric for line symmetry? How many? Only two actually, right? For an oval. If this were a circle, we'd have an infinite number, right? But for an oval, we only have two. All right, so um, I can only really draw here. You can see how that would reflect across itself. And I could draw here, that would reflect across itself. But if I went anywhere else, that oval actually would skew it and it would actually skew what's happening there if I reflected anywhere else. So for line symmetry, I only have two. Let's look at rotational symmetry. All right, so for rotational symmetry, um, I have a little bit of an issue, okay? I can't just divide by those four areas that I see, right? Because if I were to rotate this 90 degrees, if I were to take this guy and rotate it 90 degrees, we'll see if it'll let me do it over here. So if I were to rotate it 90 degrees here, it's not the same. We have a problem, right? So I can't just take the four sections that I have and divide it by 360 and say, okay, 90 degrees is my magnitude, I've got this. I actually have to go all the way around, don't I? So I have to go 90 and then another 90. So this actually does have rotational symmetry, but it's 180. 360 divided by two. Does everybody see how I had to go all the way around 180 degrees to get it back to what it looked like, all right? And so um, I actually only have an order of two. I can only rotate this twice before it's back on itself. And it's 180 degrees would be my magnitude here. Everybody see the difference between those two. All right. So describe the symmetry. This first one. Do I have line, rotation, or both for A? Line, rotation, or both? What's going on here? Yeah, I actually have both, right? I can draw a line on it. It'll work. How many times, how many lines do you think I can draw on it? How many lines do you think, by looking at that picture, an A could I possibly draw? Three, right? I have three identical figures. And they are done in such a way that I could draw my line through them and it would work, right? So I can do that three times with each, with each of those, yes? Rotational. It does have rotational. It looks like a fan. How many times can I rotate it, do you think, before I'm back on top of myself? It's the same number. It's three, right? So what's my magnitude here? My order is three. So yes, we have line symmetry, and we have three lines of symmetry. We have rotational with a magnitude, or actually we'll say an order first. We have an order of three. So what's my magnitude? 120, yep, 360 divided by that. All right, what about B? Linear, rotational, or both? Rotational, why not linear? What's the problem between this guy and the one before it? The little figures that are there are not symmetric themselves, right? I have a problem. If I were to draw a line here, that little arrow that I have is not does not reflect on itself. I have an arrow head on one side and not on the other. So I actually do not have linear. I do have rotational, same order, three. So same magnitude, 120. All right. What about C? Mm, I don't have both. Mm -mm. What's wrong with linear? It looks kind of like it would be, but that arrow is messing you up. It has to be a direct reflection. Here. So this does have rotational. What type of rotational? What's my order here? Uh-huh, my order's two. Yeah, you can, you can only rotate twice. Once, 180, again, 360. Um, what about D? I have both. How many lines? Two, and same for its magnitude, right? Order and magnitude are going to be the same there as well. Two and 180. Line symmetry is a reflection across a figure onto itself, carries the figure onto itself. 
So this is a reflection across a figure that carries the figure onto itself, onto itself. Rotational symmetry, as it sounds, is a rotation that maps a figure back onto itself. Between zero and 360, between, between means it does not include the ends of that. So if it has zero or 360, it is not rotational. It has to be less than 360. All right? So let's talk about these. Line symmetry for the rectangle. How many lines of symmetry does a rectangle have? Two. Two. Has two lines of symmetry here. All right, looks like this right in the center. If I made it actually in the center, that would be great. All right, center here, center here. All right, has two lines of symmetry. What about rotational? Does this have rotational symmetry? Yeah, what's the order? How many times can you rotate it before you're back on, or until you're back on itself? Yeah, so it has an order of two. So then what is the magnitude here? 180 degrees. Square. How many lines of symmetry does this have? Four. It's a regular polygon. So your vertices are four. It's going to have four lines of symmetry here. We have each side. It's going to have a line of symmetry. Each corner is going to have a line of symmetry. This actually also has what we talked about, point symmetry. This is point symmetry because that point is equidistant from the two where it hits the other two. It's equidistant, right? from where it hits the other two. Um, or that's not always the case for linear symmetry. Okay. So we have four lines of symmetry here. Rotational. Rotational is actually the same. You'll notice your order is the same, right? So what are is the degrees of rotational symmetry? 90 degrees. All right. What about the parallelogram? Linear symmetry. Uh, you'll notice that if I were to draw it across here, it looks like I've just done this nice little thing, but if I were to reflect right here down, it's gonna be down here, right? If I were to reflect across, it's gonna reflect with this little point coming out here and that little point coming out there. There are no lines of symmetry. So it is not, does not have any line of symmetry here. All right, so we're going to say zero for that guy. Rotational. Yeah, it's still two for rotational. So what's my magnitude here? It's going to be 180 for this. All right, so go ahead and finish the rest. The trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, regular pentagon, and regular hexagon. Go ahead and finish those. Trapezoid. Linear symmetry. Does it have it? No, it does not. We have zero. What about rotational? What's the smallest you can rotate it to get onto itself? Yeah, 360. So technically, this does not have rotational symmetry either. So if this guy right here, the minimum degrees is 360. It does not have rotational symmetry. Does not have rotational symmetry. It's not considered rotational if you have the, the lowest times you can turn it is once. All right, if your order is once. What about isosceles trapezoid? This guy's a little bit different. Linear symmetry. One, right? You do have one line of symmetry here right down the middle. So you do have one line of symmetry. What about rotational? No, it does not have rotational. So it does not have. Does not have rotational because the smallest I can do is 360. Regular pentagon. How many lines of symmetry should you have in a regular pentagon? Five. Which means your rotational symmetry will follow that same pattern. Your order is also five. So what is your degree here? 72 degrees. You should have said 360 divided by five. You would have gotten 72 degrees. So then we have a regular hexagon. How many lines of symmetry did this guy have? Six. My order for rotational is going to be the same for this, a regular polygon. So what is my magnitude here? 
60 degrees. 360 divided by six. Questions on that one? Questions on that? Let's look at the back of this page together. Let's look at the back of this page together. How do I calculate the degree of rotational symmetry if the shape is a regular polygon? Now, if it's not a regular polygon, you're going to have to figure out the points of symmetry like we did for that little loopy guy that we drew it looked like from a when you had old school things where you put a pencil in it and drew it, right? That's what it looks like. You have to count them and divide. But for a regular polygon, you have vertices that you can rely on. Simply divide 360 by the number of sides or the number of vertices. Same thing. All right? How many degrees of rotation then does a regular octagon have? Well, first we have to know how many sides an octagon have. How many? Eight. So we're going to take 360 and we are going to divide it by eight, which is going to give us 45 degrees. They can ask it a different way. Which regular polygon has a minimum rotation of 36 degrees? We're still going to use 360, but we are now going to divide the other way. We're going to say 360 divided by, by minimum degrees. So we're going to say 360 divided by the 36 degrees. It'll tell me how many times I rotated it. What do I get? 10. What is a 10-sided figure? A decagon, yes. Pulling back from way back when, right? So we already figured out an octagon. The next one is a, a kind of a different question as well. Which angle of rotation will carry a regular octagon onto itself when rotated around the center? What are my, what's my magnitude for an octagon? We figured it out in number one. What's my magnitude? Which means that whatever this is has to be divisible by 45. It would have to be 45 or 90 or 135. Does everybody see why? Because you're moving by 45 degrees at a time. So how can I figure out which one of these will work? Whichever one's divisible by 45. Which one of those is divisible by 45? 315. Yep, 315 is divisible. So 315 is my answer here. This is the one that will rotate it. The other ones, you'll get a decimal, which means you did not rotate it by its magnitude. You see symmetry everywhere. People are symmetric this way, right? Not that way, because we'll cut her in half. But symmetric, because if I were to draw a line down the middle of your face, we have linear symmetry, not rotational, okay? If they can only go 360, it's not considered rotational symmetry, by the way. So if you could only do it once, where you have to go all the way around, it's not rotational. All right? So people have symmetry. Uh, we have symmetry in your hands. You'll notice that your hands and your feet are symmetrical, right? Linear sy symmetry there. Um, animals have symmetry. If you've ever seen a butterfly, you have seen a symmetric animal, right? If I draw a line right down the center of this guy, you can see that he is symmetric. It's pretty. They're everywhere. Zebras. Their markings are unique between the zebras, but they are symmetric among themselves. Um, this actually has what type of... So we've seen linear. This actually has both, right? So a starfish, I mean, he's a little curved. So imagine the starfish after he's dried out when you find him. They, when they're dry, they have rotational and linear. This guy, because he's curved and is probably still alive, just has rotational because of that curve. All right. But, well, actually, he would have both for close enough. All right. Um, this really looks like okra to me, so it's not my favorite. But um, this has both linear and rotational. Uh, mostly because they are regular polygons. But honeycombs have both rotational and linear symmetry. And it is absolutely crazy that those bees build them so perfectly. But those are little perfect um, polygons there. Perfect polygons. All right. Number one. How many lines of symmetry does this have? One. Has one line of symmetry. Goes right through the center this way. One line of symmetry. Rotational. Yeah, 360. So there is no rotational. And there is no point because we don't have a second line of symmetry to talk about. All right. What about this one? How many lines of symmetry do you have here? Yeah, we actually only have four. All right, so while the outside guy has a lot more vertices, 
Because I have two figures to think about, you can only use the one with the smallest number of vertices. Okay, does that make sense? So I would actually only have a line of symmetry here, here, that's one, two, and then I have to think about here I can go and here I can go. Oh, it's gonna let me go that way, there. One, two, three, four. So I can't go across this one right here because uh, it's gonna cause a problem with my inside figure if I did that. Now, if I didn't have my inside figure, I'd actually have more lines of symmetry. But um, for this one, I actually only have those four. So four. Um, so if I have four, then my, my order is actually going to be four as well. Because I, when I talk about rotational, I have to think about my inside one rotating. The inside one has a magnitude of four, which means my degree, magnitude then, sorry, my order is four. My magnitude is 90 degrees here. 90 degrees. Does it have point symmetry? Does it have point symmetry? Is that center guy equidistant from each side? So if I were to go here, is it the same distance here to here? Yes, from here to here, yes. And from here to here, yes. It does have point symmetry. Point symmetry, yes. What about my football? Linear symmetry. How many lines of symmetry do I have for him? Two, two lines of symmetry, right? Here, if it'll let me draw it in the center. There we go. And then right here. Two lines of symmetry. Rotational. Yeah, two. So it's 180. My order is two and my magnitude is 180. What about point? Is it equidistant? So where it crosses, it's equidistant from end to end. Yes. Top to bottom. Yes. It actually does have point symmetry here. It does have point symmetry. Number six, how many lines of symmetry do I have for number six? How many points are on my star? Five. I have five lines of symmetry here. Five lines of symmetry. It's actually at the point and down. Oops, if I can draw it again. It's a lot easier said than done, but you get the point. So I have five lines of symmetry. Five lines of symmetry across each of my points of my star. All right, rotational. Yeah, I have rotational. My order is four as well. I mean, I mean five as well. So that means my magnitude is 72 degrees. What about point? Yes. No. Mm -mm. No, because if I go from, so here's where it crosses. From here to there and from here to there would have to be equidistant. Oh, it is that. not. I yes, so it has to be equidistant. So from here, so if I take any of these where it crosses at one point, that point has to be equidistant from either side of the figure. It is not, it does not have point symmetry. 